Welcome to the Low Car Car Show. I'm Sam Madabi, coming to you this week from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. I am headed out to the Boss Hawk Torque Converters Car, Truck, and Jeep Show. See you there. Welcome to the Low Car Car Show. This is gonna be one awesome car. And I said, it doesn't even run yet. <laughs> and look at it now, it's amazing. Muscle Shoals, Alabama, located along the beautiful Tennessee River. Home of the Muscle Shoals sound with iconic music studios like Fame. You can learn about its musical history at the Alabama Music Hall of Fame. It's also home of the ACC Performance Boss Hog Torque Converters and their annual car, truck, and Jeep show. Where else can you see unique classic hot rods, imports, and championship drag racers? Terry, I noticed you driving into the show with this, and I had to stop and check it out. What year is this? It's a 1933 Chrysler. They call it a Royal 8. A Royal 8. Royal so does eight. that mean that it had a straight had a 8 engine? Straight 8 engine in it. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. So is this something that you built yourself? Yes, I do everything except the interior. I do all the mechanical work, the painting. It is absolutely beautiful. Now, what happened to the original powertrain? Sold it. You sold it? <laughs> <laughs> I see you got a Chevy 350 in there now. Is it a 350 or has it been stroked? No, it's just a stock 350 with a 600 Elbrock. Not bad. 700 R transmission. 700 R. So mm -hmm. what kind of fuel economy does this get? It'll get around 21 miles a gallon. Oh, wow, that's and awesome. It's a, it's a good Considering fuel it's got barely no aerodynamics, that's impressive yeah. numbers. So is this something that you do for a living or is this a hobby? No, it's a hobby. I have actually built nine 33 Chrysler street guns. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would want one too. The interior though, yeah. look how nice the interior is. All the way from the roof down, the dash is gorgeous. It looks like it was done yesterday. Mm -hmm. How old is the build? This car has been done about six years. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. All right, John, it's not every day you see one of these. This is a ute, right? Yes, sir. Now tell me about this. What year is it? It's 46. 46. Yes, sir. Now what's it with this drawer back here? There was a compartment there, but it had a door that was rusted. Yeah. Fell apart. I built a drawer. Put all your stuff in here for when yeah, you travel. Yeah, the cleaning supplies. You got to have a place to put stuff. Wow, this is cool. Now, was this a car that was made here in the States? No, it's made in Australia. Right, so then it would have to be right-hand drive. Yeah. So you converted this to left-hand yeah. drive. What else have you done to it? That's basically all I've done to change anything. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the big thing is I changed it from right side to the left side. Mm -hmm. So when did they start making these in Australia? I've got pictures of 1956 models. Really? But actually, I don't know when they stopped. But they started in 1934. Wow, so what engine's in it? It's got a 302. A modern roller motor Ford yeah. engine? Yeah, it's got an AOD transmission. This is beautiful. Thank you so much, John, for letting us check it out. Uh, it's not every day you see you. No, like sir, this, appreciate right? it.
We'll be right back with more of the Boss Hog Torque Converters Car, Truck, and Jeep Show. It's time for the Low Car Lowdown with Kevin Ford. One small detail that you might be missing in your LS engine, in your old hot rod, is the valley plate. We've got a whole line of products that go make these engines look like your classic iconic engines. But the one that's overlooked the most probably is the valley plate. We offer this in a few different versions. We've got LS1 and LS3. So if you've got an LS3 and you need to block off the DOD ports and you want to improve the look, we've got that. Comes with O-ring for all the seals. You've got, an, in this case, we've got a breather oil fill version. And in this version, we've got a built-in baffled system to run your breathing off the center of this. We also offer oil pressure relocation block. This gets you down to the bottom above the oil filter. You can relocate the sensor so you're not up here unsightly in front of everything you're doing. This is just another addition to everything you can do to make your engine look like a classic engine but still have the modern performance of an LS and the reliability. Not only that, it's a little better for the environment. So check us out on lowcar.com. I'm here with Ed Beard Jr., a very talented artist that does a lot of airbrushing on vehicles. It's a 2000 Dodge B1500 van. I've owned it brand new since it was a green cargo van. Wow, green. Yep, yep. it was green. Tell us about it. Let's go through the whole thing because the airbrushing on this is incredible, but the age of it is even more impressive. Yeah, and it's a daily driver too, Sam. 21 years I've had this bad boy. You just say it was a daily driver, but I'm sitting here looking for chips because you drive it. Like you said, you drove it to Las Vegas. Yeah, drove it to SEMA in 2018. It was PPG's featured vehicle. It's all waterborne paint, so that's the reason it was there. If you don't drive it, people don't see it. I, as an illustrator for Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons for 27 years, I have a, a history of fantasy art. When my buddy said, you should make this cargo van of yours a hot rod van, because it was 260,000 miles, we were ready to junk it. So we decided to strip it down, bare bones. So I thought, Dungeons and Dragons, that's my thing. That's what people know me for. Yeah. So I took some of the most iconic images that I have done for my career, and right. I used them on the van. But I made it a storyline. So to start this storyline, okay. it all begins with the Dragon Lord, which is up on the visor here. The Dragon Lord, in the very beginning, created the very first lava and fire dragons from the bowels of the earth. Okay. Once that happened, then the earth started to cool. It went into a great ice age. And so here we have the ice dragons emerging because of the ice age. Wow. Then a millennia or two later, the great thaw happened, the meltdown, the Asiatic serpentine dragons emerged from the water. Further on, a few thousand years later, the age of man and sorcery come into play. And this is when the dragons became corrupted. You know, everyone looks at dragons as these beastly characters. But we have to know that there's intellectual dragons. They're noble and very majestic. But these guys all got corrupted by, you know, man and jewels and fancy shiny things. As we go to the back, this is where we see the ultimate corruption of dragons. And I used it as a comedy relief. I went with the speak no evil, hear no evil, and see no evil to <laughs> exemplify kind of a corrupted themselves down. The epic battle between good and evil begin and end. Valkyrie riding the white dragon with the fire of truth sword against the demon or the, the reaper with hellspawn coming from behind it, riding the back of the dragon mare. Uh, the blood red moon, you've got lightning, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. And then when you realize after everything you've come to the driver's door, you find this elder dragon here that's reading a book and from the book emerges this mist which actually forms this entire mural. And that's when you realize this is all just a story that's being told by this ancient elder dragon hidden away in his cave somewhere for millennials. Man, that's so yeah. creative. You gotta have a comfy place to sleep when you're on the road. So I have my queen size bed, which inside I have some antique water, oil, and gasoline cans. Those are over 115 years old. They're hand painted. Of course, the fire dragon on the, the gas can, the oil dragon, uh, basically a swamp dragon on the oil can, and then the water can. Uh, everything else on the walls, like that's Tiamat, which is the, of course, the dragon queen for those of you that play Dungeons and Dragons. The step ups are all hand painted to look like stonework. The walls actually were hand painted, basically molded to fit in there. You've got the ice dragon side. So the passenger side is ice dragon all around, the end step ups. Up on the CB holder, that's hand carved wood that's been hand painted for the ice dragon. And on the other side is the fire dragon. We have to go to a quick break. We'll be right back with more of the Low Car Car Show.
Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show presented by Appalachian Backroads. Man, this tour bus for Alabama, this is really cool. This is off the chain, Absolutely. Man. I'm here with Nora and Nelson at the Music Hall of Fame at the second annual Boss Hog Torque Converter Car, Truck, and Jeep Show. And I know, Nelson, you are excited to see what you see outside. Yes, we've had so much fantastic support from everybody all over, from multiple manufacturers, from the Contingency Connection to Holston Gases, all the local guys chipping in as well. I'm just so excited about what we've been able to achieve here, man. I mean, being able to pass on and support the hot rodders of tomorrow, mm -hmm. high schoolers all across the United States and getting them scholarships through the hot rodders of tomorrow, the Contingency Connection stepping up and helping everybody out with more than 70 manufacturers across the United States from Racer Quip, Howard Cams, a whole ton of these guys. Really proud to be able to offer these to the contestants and everybody showing up. This year we've been able to raise as much as $80,000 in discounted parts and giveaways as well. Wow, that's 80, incredible. That's really yeah. powerful considering it's a car show and it's the second annual car show and how much people love to come to the show. This show is actually for the people, man. It's for the Alabama Music Hall of Fame. Absolutely. We want people to come in here and check out all the music history that's here. The WC Handy Fest. We are now actually a part of a 40 year running of the WC Music Handy Festival. Wow. So we're excited about being a part of that as well. Now tell me about Nora's invitation to SEMA this year and what she'll be doing there. Okay, well that was kind of a secret, but um, <laughs> I think everybody knows it already. Yeah, there's a lot so, of people out there talking about it. She, she's actually the first underage person in 55 years to be invited to SEMA by SEMA. What are you gonna be doing there, Nora? I'm gonna tour converters like at Sam's place. Yeah, okay. She's also been invited to the Hot Waters of Tomorrow booth where she could be uh, rebuilding a Briggs & Stratton engine. She's been invited to the Pennzoil stage for an interview and also the Miller booth. We've been teaching her how to weld so she may go throw a few beads down in, at the Miller booth as well if they're having it. Tim, this is an absolute beautiful car. What year is it? It's a 1966 Chevy Nova. You don't see a lot of these years Novas, especially in this beautiful of a build. How long did it take you guys? It took us three and a half years from start to finish. And who built it? Me and a buddy of mine, Andy Higgins. This is beautiful. Now you said that you've owned this car since 1990? Since 1990. 90. Yeah, we drag raced the car for several years and then it just see it. And you decided uh, one day you're just gonna go and rebuild it, huh? About three and a half years ago, I decided we were going. Well, you did an something. incredible job. The attention to detail on the interior, because I always say the interior is where you live and to see the door panels, the dash, the extra you added, welding in the glove box, yes. all looks like it's an OEM, it's beautiful. Yeah, we tried to just make everything real clean. Yeah, and you, you did. Know. Door handles look good, but that rear seat, like I said, if you didn't know about tubs, you wouldn't have thought that those were tub covers, and it's done so nice that it looks like it's part of the rear seat. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. This is absolutely beautiful, Tim. Thank you so much for one, bringing it out, and two, letting us check it out. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad to be here. Well, Jimmy, this car really caught my eye. It's a beautiful, what year Camaro is it? 67. What caught my eye was the intercooler up front. Even though you've got it black, I still saw it. Yeah. <laughs> you did a very good <laughs> job powder coating it black. The floor link in it is the only floor link, as far as I know, in the United States like it. Really? The floor link comes all the way up under the back seat. Does pretty good. The turbo's got a 6.0, three inch exhaust from the motor all the way back. Yep, yep. I see how you took the headers and you collected the driver's side over to the passenger side so that yeah. you got a collector and yeah. you put in one turbo. Even though that kit with the two manifolds, you could put twin turbos. Exactly. And I bet with that six liter, being that it's a 76 millimeter turbo, it mm -hmm. probably spools up pretty quick and oh, you don't have a lot of lax. Very quick. You have a little bit of lax on it. When you first get on it, about that much. Yeah. And, and then instant. it spools up. It spools up. Yep. At a low RPM, like maybe 2200 RPM, it starts to spool up at around 28, 3000, you're full spool and you got three to five, three thirty five hundred RPM to go. Well, it looks like you know how to handle it because the car is still in good shape and you kept it on the road. Oh, yeah. So you're doing a good job. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for letting us check out oh, your yes, camera. Sir. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. We have to go to a quick break. We'll be right back with more of the Low Car Car Show.
want to go check out some more cool cars. And you guys remember, just like ACC Performance, these are family events. So grab your family and go check out a local car show. Bob, this is a beautiful Nomad. It's pretty cool that your wife lets you drive it, huh? She is too nervous to drive it or even to talk on TV today, so I gotta do the talking for her. So <laughs> but it is I mean, hers. It's hers. She's put the woman touch to it with a bitty boo on the back and to the sides, and it's her touch. And she wanted and the LS motor in it. She wanted the LS out. motor, so she's she's very nervous. She wanted LS motor because it's so dependable. And yep. she can drive it anywhere. So we drove it down from Tennessee yesterday. Two and a half hours, it did wonderful. It did. Look, you can see everything in the truck. Uh, yes. You're sitting there, you drive this car through the shows. How long has it been done? This is about a four or five year car. It's a car out of California, and it's all the original fenders and doors and everything. And wow. So it's been, been upgraded. And so we got a, not only the LS, we put the 4L60 transmission in at the same time, fuel injection. So she cleans it pretty good. And in fact, she was cleaning the wheels and sweating real bad the other day coming for the show. But that's got, what you do when you love yeah. these things, you know? Yeah, we got the waffle interior, and this is the original trim for it. Well, yeah. if you ever have a hard time finding that, Rusty from Nomad R Us can help you out. Well, Alex, it's not every day that you see a car like this. Now, I know JDM cars, and I've been around Skylines and Sylvia's. I even have a right-hand drive Supra. But when you pulled in with this one, I got to say, I had no idea what it is. 1991 Nissan Cedric. It just came over from Japan two months ago. Yeah. Got it lowered on Fortune Auto 500s, coilovers, Carlson wheels out of Germany. They usually stay on Mercedes Benz. I thought it would look good with this. Yeah, because it's so reminiscent of an early 90s Mercedes S-Class. It's Nissan's way of competing back then. Man, this is so cool. So how long, you said you've owned it for two months? Two months. And you basically just put the wheels and the suspension on it. Everything else, like I see, like, like Rain Guard yep. came from the factory. Rain Guard came from the factory. Everything's pretty much OEM with it. I just got an aftermarket steering wheel because Nissan's are real bad at tearing up. And yep. Yep. after the long tear, I don't want to deal with it. So. That is so cool. So what kind of engine does this have? Just the VG30DE. So a VG30DE is a non-turbo 300ZX 90 to 95 6 model, yes, right? That's cool, man. Thank you so much, Alex, for one, bringing it out for me to check out something I haven't seen before and for us to check it out. That's awesome. I'm just happy to be here. So Ray, I see you got yourself a raptor killer. It yes, says sir. it right here, it's running scared. Yes, sir. I love that. I do too. I'd never seen a TRX Dodge Ram before. I saw it was a supercharged 6.2 liter. Is that the Hellcat engine? Yes. Wow, so it's got what, 700 and? 702 horses. Wow, <laughs> and this thing, the suspension is really nice on oh, it. Oh, yes. Bilstein shocks? Yes. I saw the wide fenders are similar to a Raptor. Now, yes. what about the specs compared to this to a Raptor? Is it much better? A lot better. A lot better. Yes. Yeah. And this truck is eight inches wider than any other truck. It is, looks good. I love the reminiscent of the late 80s Nerf yes. bar in the back that they put in there. Now, what about the graphics? Was that your idea? Yes, I went to uh, this company over here in Florence. It's called Shady Business. It does window tinting. And me and him got together and done a lot of different little ideas on it. And we come up with the T-Rex chasing Raptor. the Ford Raptor. I love it. That is so awesome. Yes. This is a very cool truck. And you know, like I said, I've never seen one before, so I'm kind of glad that you brought it out here for us to check it out. With the mural on the side, the running yes. scared, the raptor being chased, that's the best part. Pretty good. Thank you so much for Got it. Got a lot of people looking at it. Today. Absolutely, this is cool. Nelson, I want to thank you for another successful show here in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Boss Hark Torque Converters really knocked it out the park. Man, it's just always a great day when you guys are coming down and stuff. It just grabs the attention of everyone. Thank you very much. We did it again at the iconic Music Hall of Fame in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. This time we were able to show you the inside of the Hall of Fame. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next week, that's a wrap. Join us next week as we head to Tennessee for Hot Bristol Nights.